Hey guys, hope everyone is well. In this video, I wanted to go over my full VFX workflow from start to finish, including my process and the software I use. Now, depending on the video I'm making, my workflow varies from edit to edit, but this will give you a great general idea of what kind of stuff I do when I'm making my visual effects. For this video, I'll be using an edit I made that I like to call Parking Meter Revenge as an example for my workflow. I'd like to start off with the software I used for this edit. Majority of the time, I'm working in Blender and Adobe After Effects. Some additional softwares I use is Photoshop for editing textures and Premiere Pro for sound design. I'm also a big fan of a Blender plugin called AE to Blend that allows you to track footage in After Effects and bring it into Blender. As I have no patience for the Blender tracking system, I always have issues with it and I find that After Effects works better if you're doing something that's quick and simple and doesn't require precise tracking. Now how I start most of my edits is I drag my footage into After Effects and I apply the effect 3D camera tracker to get a 3D solve. In this particular case, the track wasn't successful from the get go. So one way to fix that is to bring the contrast up in your image. And I just cranked up that contrast, which allowed for the software to pick up more tracking points and actually create a usable solve. Once I got that solve, I created the scene origin, added the camera, as well as some solids to use as reference for 3D integration in Blender. From there, I copied all the data from the camera and the planes and pasted it into Blender with the AE to Blend plugin. I have a more in-depth tutorial about this process in one of my previous videos that I'll link below. Because this edit involved destruction, it involved removing a part of the original clip so I had to use a method called inpainting to recreate part of the environment in CGI. The method I use for inpainting, which is a method that I recently learned, involves project from view and texture painting. With this method, you can grab multiple frames and get the background scene from different frames where the object doesn't occlude the background. For a more in-depth process of this, I'd suggest looking at CG Matters tutorial, which I have linked below which is where I myself learned this process from. Now for this edit, before I got started editing, I had to get a photo scan of the object that I used for this edit. I got a photo scan of a parking meter in my neighborhood. The way I got the scan was through an app on my phone called Polycam. Once I was done with the scan and it was finished processing, the app allows you to take the asset and easily transfer it into any 3D software of your choice. Once I imported my photo scan into Blender, I did some cleanup via sculpting. I also used texture painting, which is a really good way of cleaning up your photo scan textures, but that didn't end up in the final edit. Next, because my edit involved breaking an object in the real world, I used a boolean to cut the photo scan where it breaks apart in the edit. On top of that, because my edit involves destruction, I had to create several particle systems. To fit in the theme of a parking meter, I made some coins by adding some cylinders and UV mapping them with coins I scanned. Next I made some rocks that were simple cubes subdivided and I added a gray noise shader on top of that. For the last bit of destruction, I grabbed some pieces from the parking meter photo scan and used those as particles. All three of these assets that I made, I grouped into their individual groups and then made them into particle systems and adjusted their values accordingly. The next bit, which is very important and is often overlooked by many beginner VFX artists, is shadow catchers and holdouts. So pretty much I added shadow catchers, which add shadows into your scene, as well as adding holdout, which blocks out parts of your CG in the parts where the animation interacts with the real world. These two tools allow the render to seamlessly integrate with the real world footage. In this edit, there was a lot of animating involved, and this is also one of my first times doing character animation, so it took several passes to get it feeling right. Now a method I used to have the hand interact with the meter, which is something that I haven't used previously, is to have a keyframe constraint for when the hand moves with the meter, and for when the hand lets go of the meter. Once all the animation is taken care of, this is the part where you would create a custom smoke simulation for your edit, but I didn't have quite a hand at that yet. So I found a pre-made smoke simulation online and imported the open VDB into one of the destruction parts of my scene. 
Now once everything is taken care of in Blender, the final step to take care of is rendering. Typically you're supposed to use multiple render passes to have the most control in compositing, but sometimes if I'm lucky, like in this case, I find that I could get away with a single render layer. Usually for my other edits, I have my main render layer as well as a shadow layer. As mentioned earlier in this video, I also made a clean plate, so I rendered that out as well. Once the rendering in Blender is taken care of, I brought everything into After Effects and matched the render with the footage I shot. Some effects that I typically use to match my render with my footage is Lumetri Color, Curves, and the Tint effect if I'm working with shadows. Now this is the part in the edit where I also integrated the clean plate here and feathered it so it gradually blends in with the real background. I had to do some masking work here to finalize the transition between the real parking meter and the CG one. Next I added some additional effects such as smoke puffs and creating some cracks on the floor with 3D layers. Then I did some more masking to touch up on some rendering misalignments. I like to finish the After Effects side of things when it comes to editing with some color grading and a subtle glow on top of all the footage to make the layers blend together ever so slightly more. This is the stage where I add any additional effects. From there, I like to watch my finished edit like a maniac over and over again, spotting any additional ways I can improve the edit or any mistakes I missed. Then I export from Adobe After Effects into Media Encoder to get the final video without the added sound yet. Next I open up Premiere Pro and add my finished video without the added sound design. For my sound design, I like to pick sounds from online libraries such as freesound.org, video games I play, and music sample packs. I play around with the audio, adjusting volume, changing speed, sometimes reversing it, trimming it, and even equalizing the audio. Whatever is necessary to mend the audio to the way I'd like for it to sound. Then I play it back a couple of times to really refine my sound design and find what really works. Once I'm done with that, I export my video with the necessary settings and I'm done. The final part is to post your edit on Instagram and get those whopping 12 likes. Now, don't forget to do all that stuff that YouTubers always say to do at the end of their video. Or don't. Peace.